Buddy G Bear here, homesteading the desert. This is January 21st, Sunday, uh, 2018. And I uh, want to show you, I didn't uh, actually shoot a video yesterday because we had some wind. And I mean, we had some wind. Uh, I heard 40 mile an hour gusts, but uh, from what I saw, there were gusts probably hitting 55 or 60. And uh, had a little damage. What you're looking at here on my TV, these two little styrofoam cups, I put those on there because the speakers on this thing, on this TV, are underneath and they shoot downward. So when I'm sitting in here and I'm watching TV, I have to crank the sound up. And then when I come over to this side of the room to get something, my God, it's blaring on me. So I made these two little cones here to fit around the bottom of the TV and over the speaker areas, which is underneath here, as you can see when I run my finger. And uh, what that does is it kicks the sound out forward so I can keep the volume down a lot lower and uh, it r goes all the way across the room. All right, well, with the wind yesterday, one of the uh, casualties was it actually broke the pipe in half that was holding up my TV antenna. Looks like I'm going to have to put guy wires on that sooner or later, but uh, I got it repaired. I re-threaded it and put it together. What you're looking at down here is the uh, ballon, and uh, this is an exterior ballon as a plastic cup that goes over to the other end, but uh, it destroyed this when it came down, and I wanted to show you. Some, some people have uh, asked on my video that I did with my uh, uh, high-gain antenna. Uh, I was explaining what a ballon does. This is a 75 to 300 ohm, and what you're looking at inside here is there's a little carbon donut-like thing, and uh, there's the wires wrap around one side and around the other, and then they come out, and one connects to the positive pole of the uh, Type F here, and the other one goes to the negative of the of the Type F, and uh, that's all there is to it. And then this little wire here actually. Uh, is part of it and it all fits inside of this little en encasement here and uh, that's uh, all that's inside of these things well this one is history although I may try soldering it back together when I have absolutely nothing else to do okay another thing is you see I pulled my stove out here when I originally did this stove I only put two of these brackets on the cabinet to hold it in place and what was happening was the, the stove was swiveling back and forth. So I made another bracket today and I installed that. So now the, the thing is solid on there and it doesn't move on me. And uh, I hated when it moved because sometimes it would move and I'd go to push it back and I had a pot of something cooking on the stove and it'd spill over because of the jolt. Yeah, I fixed that. Okay, and the other thing I was doing was underneath here, inside the cabinet I, I store pots and pans in the front side here but in the back side I had my small propane bottle little 20 pound bottle that was running the, just the stove well I've got this uh, cabin is all piped into the the big propane tanks outside and that's where the the main stove is going to connect down the line so I got the measurements for everything that I need and uh, I'm going to go over to my uh, friend's uh, Jose's uh, uh, propane place and while I'm getting the small tanks refilled I got two of them to get filled I'm going to have him make me up a connector that'll go from that gas valve down there up to this stove so I could just run this off the cabin propane instead of having to have a bottle underneath there and that'll free up some storage space I know it's temporary because my big stove is coming up here with an oven in it and all of that right now I use a Coleman oven that sits on top of the burner and it, it works but uh, it would be nice to have everything set up the way it's supposed to be and uh, I like this little refrigerator so much I may keep this and just build a small two by two by two box a cube under that goes on underneath it and set this up on top so it's up higher and then the box underneath I can use for a storage of pots and pans that'd be pretty cool huh and then I still have room on top of it to, to store stuff. And you can see my pot there with, on my pan there with uh, uh, some coagulated bacon fat in there. Boy, I make some good french fries in that. Anyway, um, there's the water. And uh, I went into town yesterday, 
and I did an excursion and I was supposed to bring this bottle with me and get it filled up but guess what I forgot and with all the wind blowing and all of that all day it, it was just really hectic you couldn't do any work I mean the stuff was just blowing around like crazy uh, anyway uh, let's get out here and I'll show you there's my antenna uh, the post up there and uh, that's where I uh, cut and threaded it right there so that I could get, put the two pieces together again and uh, I'm getting good reception on it so hey fine with me let's see oh yeah I was talking about going into town um, because it was windy and there was really not much to do uh, one of the things I did was uh, I drove into um, Hellendale uh, town nearby and uh, I found a little hard mom and pop hardware store there uh, called Harry's and uh, I met Harry inside there and his dog and uh, we had a little chat and I told him what I was doing and where I was at and he says oh that's great and we talked about uh, desert ground squirrels and stuff like that and water and so forth and so on and they have one of those water machines down there also there's also a gas station there there's a supermarket there um, there's a Dollar Tree store there. So there's a lot of stuff that I can use over there. And I already used the hardware store. I came all the way back. And when I got back, that's when a, a, a little mini tornado came through and tore my antenna down. And um, I heard it come and crash. And I, the whole cabin shook when that thing hit. But uh, it, when it tore up that ballon, that transformer, I had to go get another one. So I said, well, let's go see if Harry has it. And Harry has a sign on his door that says, Harry has it. So I walked in and I said, Harry, I need one of these ballons. And at first he said, oh, we don't carry anything like that. That's old technology. And I said, oh, well. And I happened to look up and sure enough, there was two of them on the wall. And I said, you do carry them. He goes, oh, I thought you were saying ballast for a... Um, or fluorescent lights or something. And I said, no, 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 a ballon, B-A-L-U-N. He goes, oh, yeah, we got those. So it was three bucks, and I got my repair done. Okay, then I uh, uh, came over here, and uh, up in behind my water tank there, um, ever since I got out here back in 2016, there's always been a bunch of holes back there. They were old rabbit burrows, and uh, they're not being used anymore. They were, um, they had grass grown across them, so you can tell nothing was going down inside them. Um, and uh, there was no disturbed, disturbed dirt around them. But I always looked at them as, well, that's a good place to break an ankle. So today I got out here with my drag slide grater, and I grated this whole area off. And uh, I've still got that one mound of dirt to dig up and move. But uh, all the other stuff here, all the holes and that stuff, Andy will remember all of this because his little dog used to run in here and uh, stick his nose down inside the holes because I think uh, ground squirrels were going down in there. And I found some ground squirrel holes around here. But, uh, hey, they all got plowed over and uh, everything's all leveled off here. I did some back blading. I uh, fixed the road going out for the water truck. I fixed the road coming in for the water truck. So I got some work done today. And then I uh, watered all my trees in the orchard. And uh, I used about a third of a, a barrel here. And I put uh, Epsom salts around the bases of all of them. And I put some time release, uh, three month time release uh, fertilizer around the bottoms of them and uh, I noticed that uh, this one not so much but it does have uh, some little buds here starting to show up on the tops of the uh, upper branches and uh, the squirrels have been getting up here and you can see that uh, let's see if I can get that yet yeah, see how they've been chewing the uh, the bark off and uh, this one is doing a little bit better you can see uh, growth on the tips here and uh, up here you can see growth on the tips so hey these might come back this these are apple trees and uh, this one over here 
is showing some signs of of growth on the uh, tops here and I hope I'm not holding this um, video camera upside down I hope it sets to whichever way it wants to go because uh, I just looked at it and I realized that I do have it upside down from the way I usually use it well we'll see and this one here you can see it's got some green growth growing at the top of it so you know hey some of these may come back uh, this uh, multi cherry tree I don't know these little blades are homemade plastic blades I had on that turbine that uh, got shredded in the wind so I'm gonna have to make some aluminum blades that won't shred and uh, yeah I'm seeing some buds on on these trees also and uh, I'm seeing some buds on these trees it got cold last night it was down and when I got up this morning the outside temperature was 26 but uh, hey it didn't bother me inside the heater ran a couple of times during the night and and uh, when I got up, it was still 68 degrees inside the cabin, so it could be 26 outside all day long. What the heck do I care? And my coffee maker woke me up at 6.30. I got up and had some nice hot coffee, then my breakfast, and I got out here and got some work done. And here's the drag sled back in place. And I did have a question. Uh, somebody asked about how I built this. Well, the base of this, I said once before, in one of my other videos, the base of this is from an old treadmill I got from um, J&R and uh, a couple of my customers. And uh, the hooks where the chain go in, those are actually where the rollers on the uh, treadmill used to go. And uh, I made this diamond plate to go on the back side here. And uh, that, that does my scooping for or my leveling for me. And then uh, the cutters, I got two pieces, 10 inch there, um, opposite directions. The first one's on the front. I've got so it directs the dirt into the center of this unit. Then the other two uh, kind of direct the, the, the dirt back into the center here also because they're already cutting behind the first ones. And then everything comes down to this one. And those are two pieces at th three feet long each and uh, welded together in a 90 degree right there and then um, put towards the rear of this and then I also have some angle iron braces going from uh, that cutter or that shaper back to the uh, main frame for added support because that takes a lot of beating as you can see I run over uh, little bushes and stuff and it just shreds those right out of the ground and just keeps on grading and then this piece back here kind of levels everything off as you can see when I dragged it here and uh, gives you a nice looking grade. So that's all there is to it. Um, if you come across a treadmill base and you decide to make one of these and need more measurements, I can uh, shoot a separate video using a tape measure and show you the exact measurements there. All right, I gotta get some other things done here. Time to get the cabin cleaned up and I got some work to do. So. G-Bear signing off from another episode of Homesteading the Desert.